Hello, this is Don from BrainBlinks.com, and today I'm going to show you a, a stupid mesh trick, <laughs> uh, something a kind of a mashup of tools I came up with that lets me take these awesome shapes from Mandelbulb 3D, the procedurally generated 3D fractal shapes, and run them through a new app from Autodesk. It's a free app in beta called PhotoFly, and come up with a 3D textured mesh that you can use in just pretty much any 3D app that you use. I've been using it in ZBrush and converting them for use in a, a Unity game, a Unity 3D game I'm working on. I was so excited when I realized I could do this. Ever since I first started using Mandelbulb 3D, I was like, oh, I wish I could take these in to ZBrush and paint them and, and uh, uh, manipulate them and use them in other apps. So as soon as I saw this photo fly, something just clicked, and I was like, "Oh, I could, I can finally do this." So, and here's that same mesh in ZBrush, one that I've converted down to about 20,000 faces and retextured the high resolution texture. And I've got this working in Unity 3D already too. So it's a great way to. I've been using it to generate landscapes. Even if you were just going to use it for the 3D geometry and for a way to uh, come up with new ideas for shapes and landscapes, it would be great for that. So, um, there is the too long, didn't read version. So, let me reset up and I'll show you how I do it um, step by step. Okay, um, so what we're going to need for this trick is. Mandelbulb 3D, which is a free 3D fractal rendering application. Um, I've made some tutorials for Mandelbulb 3D, so if you don't know how to use it, you can look at my YouTube channel. There's a set of four or five tutorials there to show you how to use it. You can get it at fractalforums.com, or if you just go to uh, bit.ly slash get m3d, I set up a bit.ly link for it and then you can find the newest version of Mandelbulb 3D right here amazing program so much fun uh, you also need an app called MeshLab which is an awesome tool for manipulating 3D meshes and it's free open source and it's actually quite amazing I've been using it a lot this week and that's going to help us take the mesh that we get from PhotoFly and clean it up for use um, with other 3D apps. And this PhotoFly is the key to the whole thing. It's a, a beta test application from Autodesk that lets you take a bunch of pictures of an object and then turn, it takes all that data and crunches it around and turns it into a, a, a textured 3D object. And uh, as meant, of course, for real life objects, but it's no fun using stuff for what it was supposed to be used for, so <laughs> we're going to use it to take pictures of things that don't exist. So um, grab that app. Just search for PhotoFly as one word, and you can find it. And uh, maybe watch these shooting guidelines, and it shows you kind of what you need to do to take the proper photos that this thing needs. It's not really that hard. Similar to taking a panorama, a series of panorama photos, if you've ever done that. All right, so here we are, Mandelbulb 3D. I've got this scene set up that I want to try to turn into a mesh. And what I've had the best success with so far is kind of a higher ambient light setting, also a high ambient shadows, and that kind of makes all the details pop, pop out. And then to help keep myself um, oriented and also to help keep PhotoFly oriented I've been using these colored local lights and um, that kind of gives PhotoFly a place to anchor to and breaks up some of the self similar and repeating patterns on the uh, that can happen in fractal images it also helps me keep track when you're flying around um, making the camera paths and generating the frames you need to feed to PhotoFly because uh, if you've used Mandelbulb 3D, you know how easy it is to get disoriented in here. Um, 
It's also important when you set up the lights that you, on your main lights, that you use light angles relative to object so that when we move the camera, the light is not going to move with us because that can confuse the photo fly and the stitching algorithms too. So I haven't actually tried a colored, super colorful object in uh, to get uh, that texture, um, mostly because of how hard it is to control the colors in M3D. I have I just haven't even tried, and frankly, I'd rather just paint it in photo, in and ZBrush or something. That that was my whole idea. I mostly want the shadow details, um, which helps bring out the details of the mesh. So once I get my uh, lighting set up, then we need to make a camera path around the object. And what I have generally been doing is kind of doing three arcs around an object. I, I haven't done too many 360 degree views, although those do work. Um, mostly because I'm interested in getting landscape type shapes and also because it's super easy to get lost on those 360s and end up pointing at the wrong thing. And <laughs> I'd like to do um, some of those also. But what I've been doing is doing like an arc of the camera, like I'll do an arc around here and then go up higher and do an arc around the top and an arc around the bottom. Like here are the frames that I used for this project. And it's good. What I do is just kind of point the camera then I shift over a couple slots with the arrow, with the the camera control keys. Turn my camera to point to keep the the same part of the object in the center of the frame. Set a keyframe, and I slide over, move the camera. Sometimes you have to change the pitch and yaw of the camera in M3D to keep it pointed correctly. So I'll like I'll like shift over to turn to and maybe sometimes use the rotate to keep the horizon, the quote unquote horizon centered. <laughs> it's just kind of, you just need some practice moving around in M3D to get this part right. You can also just set up keyframes. Um, so you could like set a keyframe here, pap, go over here, set a keyframe here, Go over here, set a keyframe, and then let M3D calculate the in-between frames. But a photofly suggests about 30 to 40 images around an object, so you want something every 10 degrees. It definitely likes overlapping, so um, if you go in to shoot a close-up or um, get behind an object uh, for a for a view behind something, make sure that you do more than one image from that spot from a slightly different angle and that's the way that Photofly squeezes the 3D data out of it. So once you've got your frame set up go ahead and render them out. I've been using I've been having great luck with 1280 by 720 images even lower resolution. Um, I'm getting plenty of detail in the geometry and the, the texture. I would like to I haven't even tested it out with a real camera yet, <laughs> uh, so I don't know what happens when you give it a higher resolution image, um, but I would like to try that out. So I've been using 1280 by 720 for all my, for most of my tests here. And then when you get your frames, then you just load up Photofly, and it's one of, it's an app that kind of works in the cloud, so um, what you do is add all of your images to the project oops yeah 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 add all of your images to the project I don't think you can go over 80 or over 100 images um, I haven't gotten I, I've tried some with over 100 and they just fail so I've been keeping them less than that there's also an option to wait or have it email you. I've just been waiting. Um, I've already uploaded these, so it should go very quickly. But generally, it takes maybe, I think this one took about 20 minutes to upload and process before I got the first scene back. 
So you upload your photos, they do all their uh, super crazy math up there, and then they send their information back to you, and then you'll be able to see the scene here. I thought this would go quicker. So after you send the photos, it, it does all its crazy calculations and then sends them back to you. And then this first time around, you get a low resolution mesh, kind of a draft version, kind of for you to check on before you uh, submit for the high resolution mesh, I guess. These meshes are usable too, they're just kind of... Uh, low res. <laughs> well, this thing's being slow today. So here's a low resolution version of the mesh and you can see my camera path here. This is part of how PhotoFly does its magic I'm sure is that it can figure out where your camera went. So you can see I did really good. Nice. This is a nice arc here. And the second one was nice. But then they got a little janky. <laughs> so even on this simple simple one, it's easy to get lost. And that's not bad. That's probably even more frames than I needed right there. So after you look at this mesh and you see that it, it, uh, it's something that you want to get a higher resolution version of, then you go up here, hit this mesh quality. I can hit click on maximum. And then it sends some more data back to their servers. It does some more crunchy crunchy and sends you back to high resolution version. So now it's sending back the data from the high resolution mesh. Also down here is all the frames in your in your stitching if you notice down here that the, any of the frames have a little exclamation mark and are kind of grayed out that means that it had to skip that frame because it couldn't figure out where to stitch it and you can go in there manually and stitch them and give it some reference points and have it included in the in the stitch I haven't had to do that yet though which is amazing I've only had it fail once and that was one that I just totally scattered a few shots and threw them at it just to see what would happen. Come on, you can do it, computer. I know you only got 12 things going. All right. So here's a, a high, the high-resolution mesh. And there are some tools in here for um, cleaning up the mesh a little bit, but the tools in MeshLab are way better so what I just do is from this point export the scene as save it as I've been saving as a dot obj because that's what ZBrush reads and I'm comfortable with that format if there's a reason not to use that format if any of you out there know more about 3d file formats and would suggest a better one please let me know okay so let's uh, load up MeshLab and fix this mesh up a little bit All right, let's see. Photofly is done with its techno voodoo. Let's get up Mesh Lab. And before I forget, uh, there's an awesome set of tutorials about Mesh Lab on YouTube. I think they're called Mr. P. Yeah, Mr. P's Mesh Lab tutorials. These are awesome. I learned everything I know about MeshLab from these. <laughs> Especially great are the, it just explains the basic uh, interface and controls, if nothing else. Um, so 
So yeah, just search for Mr. P's Mesh Lab Tutorials. So this is the mesh that Photofly spit out at us. It's got right now 472,000 faces, 278,000 vertices. And it's got a UV map and a crazy UV map at that. I mean, there's thousands of islands in this thing, but it works. Um, but the biggest problem with this mesh is the topology is just wacky. <laughs> All of these are little islands, not only of the UV map, but also on the mesh. They're not connected, and it drives ZBrush crazy when I try to do anything uh, any tricks like the decimation master or anything so to get rid of those I've been using one of the cleanup tool features um, what we're looking for this here is a selection tool that selects contiguous pieces of the topology so what we want is for us for all this to be one contiguous piece um, so over here on filters cleaning and repairing merge close vertices um, this is kind of just a, a guess and try thing for me as to which value works have gone anywhere from 1 to 20 on this percentage thing here and remember there's no there's no undo in mesh lab so make sure you have a copy of whatever you're working on save before you do anything too drastic to your mesh I'm gonna try 16 on this one not quite enough let's try again I might have had something selected on that mesh too you need to make sure you don't have any um, faces or points selected or it'll just do it on that, I believe. I'm still a newbie with Mesh Lab, so let's see. Merge close vertices. I swear 16 worked on this one last time. Yeah, that looks like it was a little too high. We got rid of them all, but I did a little too much and the mesh data got corrupted. See, it's a little angular now. So let's try one more time. I sure like this mesh lab. It does all sorts of neat tricks with meshes. Um, I love op open source powerful software like this. It really gives people power to do things on their own, you know, uh, without limiting it to people who can afford it. All you need to do is put in time and effort and interest. Let's try this again. Let's try six. If anybody knows a better way to do this, please let me know. Like I said, I'm just kind of a new so that this one's much better there's still a couple areas that I'm probably going to delete anyway these are just holes in the actual mesh so that looks good so I would go ahead and save that and use that in ZBrush export mesh as I've been using OBJ from here again too there's also ways to decimate and optimize the mesh right in mesh lab um, this one in particular is handy because it keeps the texture this quadratic edge collapse decimation <laughs> this one I've been having fun with too this Poisson reconstruction it kind of makes these little planetoids uh, out of these meshes it kind of tries to complete the mesh as, a, as it might think it would look in 3D this VCG is also I've had luck reconstructing the mesh with that to make a more consistent um, topologically uh, contiguous mesh 
I don't know what most of this stuff does, <laughs> but it sure is fun poking around on it. Okay, so, <laughs> um, let me just demonstrate that uh, while I'm in here. Remeshing this quadratic edge collapse decimation with texture. It still uses the same crazy UV map and uh, UV, but it does a pretty good job. It's almost as good as ZBrush's uh, decimation master. So I told it I wanted to have 24,000 faces and to try to keep the normals. So there's that same mesh with 24,000 faces in the same UV map. So powerful tool. Thanks to the people who made it. These people right here. <laughs> okay, so here's the original mesh as it was uh, spit out from Photofly. And let me show you what I mean. Like, if I try to do decimation master on this thing, because of all the the funky topology, how they're all disconnected, it gets confused. And puts extra holes and everything everywhere. Or if you try to use the the topological move brush which I use a lot you can see that it just it, all the, it's like it's shattered in place kind of <laughs> like a broken piece of glass that hasn't fallen out of the frame yet but here's the fixed version with just as much detail but it's all contiguous and ZBrush is much happier with this one uh, one thing to keep in mind I don't know what it ZBrush's little inside joke. I don't know why they never never changed this, but the texture is upside down in ZBrush almost all the time. So you gotta flip it vertically before you load it in and use it. So there it is on ZBrush. Now one other note um, while I'm in here with with uh, Def, Def, Decimation Master. I like to usually when I use it I'll keep the UVs and do a decimation but in this case because the UV is so crazy complicated um, decimation master will only work so well because if you try to keep the UVs it needs to have faces for each one of you know each to match up with the UV so let's say we wanted to do this down to 10 percent it just won't go that far it'll only go um, as far as it can and keeping the same UV so if you want efficient UVs and a super efficient mesh what you're gonna have to do is do the decimation master without the UVs and then use like the Z project or the remesh or the I'm sorry um, project all feature to copy the color information from the original mesh to your new mesh with the proper UVs. And if you're familiar with ZBrush, you're probably familiar with that process already. Well, that was just one hurdle I had to get through before I could get it out from here into Unity or something like that. Alright, so there's how I've been doing it. If you guys um, try this out, I would love to see what you come up with, or if you have any questions, I'll do my best to answer them. Um, stay tuned here, too, and just uh, Sometime over this next week, I'll have a preview version of my Unity 3D game that uses these mesh in-game. So that'll be fun. I'd love to get some feedback on that to you. So thanks for watching. Check out brainblinks.com for more of my crazy experiments. And I will see you next time. Bye.